took me about a mile to hike out here. Really, I always tell people any place you can find oaks on slopes, that's that's where you want to be. I mean, really, you can go anywhere. Um, we just had rain, a heavy rain, just a few days ago. And I kind of thought this area here would uh, begin to produce mushrooms. So, uh, yeah, there's another patch there patch there I'm just walking around kind of seeing what I had before I decide to make a video but uh, oh, come on guys I hate seeing trash out here we'll have to pick that up and by trash I'm not talking about this beautiful chanterelle mushroom I'm talking about this right here this trash. Where did it come from? I don't know how it got out here, but styrofoam does not go away ever. As I cut each mushroom, I'm checking base right here to see if there's any insects that have crawled up in there. Um, a lot of times, uh, slugs will uh, make good lunch of these. Nice crisp. That big fat one. Look at that big fat one right there. I'll cut the base. No bugs, clean. No, no dirt. That's the most important thing. No dirt. Now, ideally, I would want to clean all these mushrooms right where I cut them, but for the benefit of this video, I'm uh, doing it like this, just to kind of show you guys, you know, what I've got. Either way, the mycelium in the ground knows the mushroom was just picked, just like the fruit or the vegetable off any plant. When you pick it, the plant knows to produce more. Well, mycelium works the same way underground. It's like a, it's like a spider web underground that reaches out everywhere, and this is the fruit that it produces. Um, yeah, it's love it, love picking chanterelle mushrooms. Yeah, that's nothing that we want. too bad. That's edible. Alright, well, let's walk around here a little bit more. My bag, my bag is over there. I set it down and now I'm going to walk all this area around my bag and just look because chances are these have spawned out or reached out someplace else, like right here. Look at here. There we go. Alrighty. Wow. Oh, check that out. It's huge. Just huge. Let's check it. Oh boy. There's another one there too. Here, I'm gonna leave that one go. I don't see any other ones around in this quite vicinity. Let's walk the edge here and check. I gotta empty my 
a handful here, but there's more. Nice. Free wild dinner. Grown right in the woods, probably right around where you live. Are you uh, are you benefiting or are you just wasting? You tell me. All right. Well, I'm not going to get a lot done making a video and not picking, so I'm going to start picking. I'll be back. I'd find them over here. I just, gosh, I couldn't figure out where they were. You guys ever sit in the woods and feel like somebody's watching you? I mean, I just, I literally feel like somebody's watching me right now. I can't figure it out. Let's uh, harvest all these and get out of here because weird. I feel like there's a lot, actually, a lot of people right now watching me. I, I don't know why. Also, also, I'm wondering why I talk to myself. Oh my gosh, I thought it was just one or two down here, didn't you? Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just like, you know, it's just, how you doing? Yeah, man, you know, it's a Marshall Miss now. I heard that all of a sudden, serious. It's a, uh, Oh, you did look at on this Marshall Miss now. You just see, you know, this is Marshall. Oh, you did look at me last on this season. Oh, you did look at your first. Well, you know, truth be told, I didn't come out here to hunt mushrooms today. But I did bring a knife. I did bring a bag. I guess I kind of was looking for mushrooms. I told my wife that if I found them, I'm probably going to be more than a couple of hours. If I don't find them, I'll probably, I'll probably be home soon, but, uh, you know, you never know. You never know when, when I might find them. That's a nice one. So no one here. They tend to grow under. See these? Isn't it weird that they came up from under there? That's what happens. I don't know why. I don't know the reasoning behind it, but uh, a lot of the times, they grow under things, so... We're gonna look around more. I think there's more. Stay tuned. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> my gosh. What? What is going on here? They're all buggy. That's a big one right there. Let's see that one. Oh boy, please don't be buggy. Please don't be buggy. I'm trying to cut with my left hand. I never use my right. Ooh. See all the holes? See all the holes right there? Those are all bugs. I'm going to take it just because, I don't know, you know. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll eat that. Let's see these other ones here. I can tell you that right now that's buggy. I can feel the stem on them. And if the stem is soft, this one's full of bug holes. See there? All eating through. Bugs like to go right up through the center of them. I'm afraid most of these are uh, not any good. Let's check this one. That's actually good. Okay, we'll take that one. All right. Trial and error. Here's a fresh one. That's fresh. That one here is fresh. Oops. That one's good. Lump them right here. We all they kind of fell apart here. That one's good. There's more right there. They're not any good, but there's more over there that I was uh, gonna go get. So those in there. Always keep an eye out. Always looking. There are always people that are trying to get my mushrooms. Right here. I'm not even looking at my screen. I hope, I hope this is recording it. Oh boy. Underneath these, look at that big old clump. Sometimes these are just hard to get. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Great, great evening. What do we got over here now? Look here. Oh boy. Alright, I'm gonna stop making videos now and start picking later. It's so, so extremely hard to, uh, to film and pick all at the same time, but easier when there's a bunch of mushrooms right here to pick on. And I'll pull it right here. Bag. Pull right here. Uh, one over here. Actually there's three over here. Yeah, yeah those are not those aren't good. Did you see them? That one's good. That's a nice one. Here. Oh yeah. Just gotta keep looking, but I already already knew that there were gonna be some back in here, so there. There's some. There, there, back there, way back here. Let's take a walk. Oh, oh stop down there. There's some. There's some. There. 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 All in here. I was really careful where I walk. They're everywhere. They're everywhere and they're they're hardy, they're good, they're fresh. These are all up from the last rain that we just had. And they're all over the place here. Ooh, stepped on it. Okay, I gotta get busy. I can't keep talking here. So this, this is called ghost pipe. It's a, it's a pretty cool plant. It's uh, medicinal. You'll have to look it up and uh, figure it out for yourself. But uh, ghost pipe is the name of that. mushrooms here that we're not looking for.
moths. Lots of walking. Find a couple more. Now comes the fun part. I gotta carry these all the way out the way I came in. Now comes the fun part. So you've gotten home, you've got your mushrooms. Now what? What do you do with them? How do you process them? What steps do you take? Now I already told you guys, I already looked to see if these were bugs. And uh, this one here, like I can see it. I can see that uh, it's very buggy on the inside, kind of dry. I'm not going to keep this. I'm just going to throw it to the side. I'm going to look at them. If I need to, I'll take the brush and brush them off. But uh, a lot of them, a lot of them actually is, a lot of them you just need to brush off. I want, I want to get all the grass off. Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm going to cook these myself, if I'm going to keep them, fry them, however I'm going to do it. Um, I'm still going to take this process and clean each and every mushroom. Inspect each and every mushroom as well to make sure that uh, they are chanterelles. Um, that there's not slugs or bugs in them, on them. You know, this one here is kind of, uh, it's, I mean... If I got this, if, if I went to the store and bought mushrooms and this was there, I would be mad. So we're going to toss that to the side. Here we got a little bit of dirt still on that. So we're just going to take a knife and just cut that off of there. And cut the bottom one more time. Look at that nice, beautiful, clean uh, texture there with no bugs in it. So yeah. You see that? You see the... You see the bug? Slug. It's a slug bug. He's not going to eat it all, but we don't want him in there. Would you want him in there? All right. We're going to take a closer look at here. Maybe that will cut. Now, as big and as beautiful as this is, I mean, I guess you could eat this if you wanted to. Um, I am selling all of my mushrooms at market. I am, well, I'm not selling them at market. I'm taking them to somebody. I'm taking these to somebody that are going to sell them. And uh, this is a little too bug-eaten and icky for me, so we're going to get rid of this. I mean, even for me, that's that's just a little too far gone. I would not, uh, I wouldn't consume that myself. So that poor slug could have stayed on there, I guess, huh?
mosquitoes are driving me crazy. Like I said, we've just had a whole bunch of rain over the last few days, and I know these uh, mushrooms uh, needed it. I knew they were going to sprout and open up like in the way that they did. And like I knew that just a walk in the woods might give me more than just a walk in the woods. So always be prepared. I always carry a bag. Um, really just in case I ever find trash, like a lot of trash, I like to carry it out. But I also like to carry a bag in case I uh, find a whole bunch of chanterelle mushrooms or anything else in the woods. So hopefully this bug zapper I just turned on will take care of these darn mosquitoes at you. Here's a bug right there. I want that on you. Go away, Mr. Slug. Slug bug. They don't eat a lot, but you sure don't want to see one when you're trying to eat your mushrooms. So yeah, the next process after this, um, I will take them to the mushroom farm, and uh, he will analyze them, look them over, make sure that uh, they are what I said they are, and he will pay me for uh, what the product it is. In the state of Michigan, it is illegal to sell these types of mushrooms or any wild mushrooms unless you are certified and licensed to do so by the state. So um, I can only sell them to him because he is licensed through the state of Michigan to uh, ID mushrooms and to know what they are. But uh, if you were going to cook these yourself, you could easily tear one open, tear it into pieces, and uh, throw it in a pan just like any other mushroom, saute it in butter, get the moisture out, add your seasonings, you could add garlic, you could add onion, you could do anything you want to, great with steaks, great with eggs, um, anything that you eat mushrooms with, these are awesome mushrooms and the best part is they're free, totally free, just get them out of the woods yourself. And now that they're in the bag, again, you don't want you want to store your mushrooms uh, preferably in paper, in a paper bag rather than a plastic bag. Uh, the paper bag will absorb some of the mo uh, moisture of the mushroom, um, but it'll keep them fresh as well. And then we're going to take this paper bag and we're going to put it in the bottom of the fridge um, until I take it to the farm. Keep them in the fridge, keep them fresh. Otherwise, they'll get all uh, mushy and uh, start to go bad, and you don't want that. You want you want your mushrooms to be good and fresh, so you don't buy your mushrooms uh, icky and old from the store, do you? I don't. These mushrooms here are a little tore up because, uh, well, because they're at the bottom of the bag under all the way to of all the other mushrooms. Um, this is what you end up with because, preferably, I like to have a, a, a bucket or something to carry them in. Something that will support the bottom of the bag, something that will uh, support all the mushroom, the weight of the mushrooms so they don't quite look like this, but it's all right. First or second flush of the year, a lot of people don't uh, really worry about what they look like because when you cook them and you eat them, that's all that really matters. There's no reason you can't get out where you live and find exactly these types of mushrooms or others. I mean, you've got oyster mushrooms, you've got uh, chicken of the woods, one of my favorites, chanterelles. Um, there's all sorts of different edible mushrooms you can find in the woods where you where you live and it's uh, Actually pretty simple. So well as you just saw Just gotta get out and do some walking. Did I drop any up front? Well, I don't think I did All right mm. Snail food <laughs> Mushrooms. It's a, 
That's a mosquito marm. That's a nice hefty bag of mushrooms. Don't you say? Well, it's time to go to the farm. You ready? Just across the bridge from where I live in Wisconsin. Yes, I said Wisconsin. Got the Chautauqua Creek Mushroom Company. Oh, look at that front row parking. Where's the mushroom man? Hi, Jason. How you doing? I got mushrooms for you. Awesome. I know a guy. You know a guy. That's good stuff. Let's take a look. Alright, got it all ready. Let's see what we have. Alright, first things first, 2.8 pounds. $10 a pound. Let's make sure it's all good. Yeah, even the one I thought, well, maybe I'll throw it in there and maybe he'll take it. Just have to make sure that they're all what they're supposed to be. <laughs> I threw that in there on purpose. And they're all what I was talking about themselves. right before, you need to find out and make sure that they hold that. You guys probably noticed we're in Wisconsin, but he holds a Michigan license. And Indiana. And Indiana. For redundancy reasons, uh, it's a federal requirement. They left it up to the states to dictate the terms. Wisconsin's still in the process of development. They, they expect to have the class ready by this autumn uh, pandemic. You know, they had slowed everything right. down. That's why nobody's able to get recerted or anything in Michigan right now. No new certifications are being issued. Um, all that being said, that piece of paper enables me legally binding uh, to buy and sell wild mushrooms. Uh, I carry insurance just for wild mushrooms as well as the mushrooms on the farm. So there are other elements besides the certification to being a broker, but that's the, the opening uh, salvo is becoming certified. And right now Ansel, my eight-year-old son, or seven, about to be eight-year-old son, is in the process of studying. I'm going to get him certified. I'm pretty sure he's going to be the youngest person in the U.S. to be certified as a wild mushroom. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. And so my wife's going to be certified as well. So we're working on that for whenever I research next year. But like I told them, easy money, eat, eat it yourself or cash it in yeah, for a little is, profit. And look, this is food of the kings, food of the gods. In ancient times, Roman, Egyptian times, you you know, even into the Robin Hood story, right? The king's forest. The things that dwell in the king's forest are the kings. So you as a common person could even be put to death for consuming wild mushrooms, you know. Um, as theft and stealing them, we as Americans have this distinct legacy of the the public spaces and public parks, and for you to forage uh, for yourself is perfectly acceptable. And these guys are a premium food, and they're just waiting right out there in God's grocery store at Uper Stop, eh? Right. So, thanks for bringing them in, man. I appreciate it. We'll make sure that these go to uh, lots of folks who who want to get them. Cool. Got any mushrooms in your yard we can go look at? Yeah. Are you kidding me? This is a mushroom farm. There's stacks of wood everywhere. That's the name of the game. All right, so I've got logs soaking. That's what this rail is empty for. They're soaking. These are the ones I just pulled out uh, the other day. You can see all the pins on them. If we go down to the next 50 feet, uh, you'll see the the mushrooms almost ready to harvest. So you can just see these guys peppered in pins, just top to bottom, left to right, up and down. They are. Uh, oh yeah. Loaded. So as soon as you hit them with water, eh? Yep. You know, I, I have irrigation, obviously. We turn on hoses and sprinkle and the coax the crop along. Oh, that's the next stage. Yeah, I just started picking in here today on this section. I'll pick for a couple more days. And I'll uh, glean them all off probably. Oh, holy Thursday. moly. Look at them all. Oh, shiitake. <laughs> hey, you know what they say? shiitake happens if you try really hard and take care of the crop but shiitake happens oh yeah well, look at them all they're 
this everywhere. This is not typical for your average producer. I mean, I you know we put a ton of love. Well, look at look at the log yard. I mean, yeah, they're not they're not playing around here. No, I'm I'm getting where I want to go, but a long way to go at the same time. Still, so, uh, I've got another I don't know 450 feet down. I'm gonna go with this just shiitake. Uh, 400 feet will be active management, and the other 400 will be retirement yard. And then uh, we have a new crop, so that's going to be fun too. I'm clearing this whole uh, thing out, which is 16 and a half miles of pines. <laughs> Sorry, 16 and a half acres. Yeah. Of just the pines, N the, not the fields on the side, just pines. 300 foot wide strip that goes on for a quarter mile along 16 and a half acres that I'm in the process of clearing. I'm only like two acres in now. But I'm getting there. <laughs> We gotta go over here and look at these oysters real quick. So all these buckets have different experimental substrates right now. Um, different woods and different mixtures of, of ingredients with those woods produce different results. So I'm looking for really cheap, real world, low energy, no energy solutions to bucket culture as a, a possible alternative for some of the other mushrooms that we grow indoors. Oh, I remember the buckets in the barn. <laughs> right. They were... So this is all wood. It's not straw. There's no straw. I love not having to deal with straw, not heating it up, no lime, no peroxide, no sterilization of any sort. This is just straight wood. There are some amendments added to some of these for nutrition. Um, some of them are just straight wood, and there are several different types of woods being tested here right now. Uh, and it's uh, these are basically 20 pound bags, so I'm measuring the yields off of them over the life of the bucket and also measuring the data from you know the time that they were inoculated, uh, things like that. So I'm trying to develop a, just a really low cost solution to, to cultivating mushrooms basically out of waste, which is the essence of mushroom farming. Basically, you could sell a bucket to uh, somebody and they could cultivate oh, mushrooms. Sure. Yeah, in, uh... bucket tech is one of the easiest ways for you to get going. It could be as simple as straw or aspen chips. Um, but generally speaking, you've got to boil those contents. <laughs> another another free have, marketplace. Yeah, you're going to have free to grocery store. On and things like that. So this is a way that I'm trying to do right now where we're actually taking our leftover blocks from inside. I'm spawning them with those. Hmm. So I'm not even investing in spawn at this point. I'm trying to turn my waste and other waste into an additional product line. If that makes sense. Yep, it does. Yeah. These are all, this is my talkie bed right here. These are the leftover American elm seedlings for the ones that died. I've got to go plant all those. There's a couple hundred left. I planted like 400 already. Well, I think we got 375 I gave, so there's probably 100 there. All right, wine caps, look by our feet. We're going to find them. Now, uh, here's a better example, Jason, right here. Fucking beautiful. Oh. Right here, right there. Oh. Right on my hand. I just touched yeah. one. <laughs> Arr. My son will approve. <laughs> it's a dino. Just like everything else, you need to watch where you step because they're everywhere. They'll, they'll be all the way across here. This will be a little vein. Huh. Hide them for another, look, I mean, right here. Yeah, right in front of me. Just barely yeah. under the surface. Tomorrow these will be harvestable. Right. Okay, we better get out of here. So, yeah, this is one, two, three, four, five original wine cap beds from last year. They're 70 feet long, I mean, they're 300. Uh, 350 feet here is that right yeah uh this year i made uh 10 70 footers so 700 feet and then i'm re respawning this uh and i'll eliminate all these buckets in here so it'll actually be 1500 feet roughly by the end of this season i already made 10 so 11 12 you know there's another 100 11 12 here Plus mushroom farming it's easy you should do it at home yeah, you can make it as big or small as you want to. And the I recommend small. Sad part is you are at home. I know. <laughs> Never get to leave work. Right, right, right. Pandemic was normal to me. There you go, guys. You guys have been asking for a mushroom video. So we, uh, I think I put it over the top that time. You probably weren't expecting to see shiitake and everything else in here. So shout out to Matt, buddy of mine. Taught me everything I know. Yep. You can see how far we're going. Oh, my gosh. 
That's it's mowed all the yeah, way. Yeah, I think we can see in that video. Will, that will be the end of the log yard. That's a good couple hundred yards. It's I can see. It's a thousand feet from the road to there. Oh boy. Yeah. Whew. Hey, halfway ish. <laughs> It'd be five acres of log yard, so it's a big log yard. That's At it. least you don't have to carry Everyone's a bucket uh, for four miles each day. No, I'm very glad I don't have to water this with by hand. You know, there's ponds that's, and creeks and springs and things. Oh my! That's what he has me for now. Now I go explore three, four, five, ten miles and. Uh, I, I still get to forage when I'm done with the farm work at some point. <laughs> All right. I miss foraging. Thumbs up, subscribe, share, make a comment below if you guys like mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms? Make where you guys hunt for mushrooms? mushrooms. <laughs> and. Uh, if you guys are near Marquette, Michigan, or the Upper Michigan area, keep an eye on TV6 because somebody's going to be on TV tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. We're doing a TV6 <laughs> interview tomorrow. You'll probably see this after that, so, uh, oh well. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. Just that easy. Just that easy. Free money, free dinner. Take your pick. It's right there waiting for you. It's almost as easy as growing corn.